Hi everyone, it's teacher Penny again. I hope that you have had a good week so far because my week has been so, so good. It's so good that I prepared two special stories for you today. And the reason for why I want to prepare two stories for you today is also because we are starting a new series. Guess what that series is called? It's called A Holy God Deserves a Holy People. Yeah! And this series is gonna run for four weeks straight. Okay, so the first week you have me here on screen, and then for the next three weeks, you're gonna get Teacher Emma on screen. Yay! And kids, today we are going to learn about this word, holiness. 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 Hmm. What is holiness? This word belongs to God, isn't it? When we say God is holy, what do we mean? What do we mean when we say God is holy? Hmm, I suddenly don't know. So kids, have you figured out what is holiness? I've got the answer. Here it is. Holiness means that God is separated from the rest of the world, from the rest of us. And I guess this means that he is very, very different from the rest of us. That he is very, very special. Now you may ask, why is God separated? Is it a good thing that he is separated from us? The Bible says that it is a good thing that God is holy and separated from the rest of us. Because God is not just good, but perfectly good. And if God is holy and He is perfectly good, what about us? Well, we're nothing like God. We're not perfectly good. We are just like the rest of the world who are unholy, unclean, evil, and sinful. But God is very much different from us. And that's a good thing. The world's best thing is that God is holy. But wait a minute. This means that we can never be with God, isn't it? This means that we can never be with God. <gasps> oh no! What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? When God, the holy God, cannot be with unholy people like us. Hmm, there must be some way. Now let me tell you a story about how we can be made holy like Him. There was once a town called the Stinky Town and everyone who lived in Stinky Town are stinky, smelly, dirty and unclean. And the funny thing is that they love it that way. The dirtier and smellier you are in Stinky Town, the more they like it. So everyone in this town wears clothes that has never been washed before since the day that they were born. They have never combed their hair so it's always messy. There might even be some ticks lying in their hair 
so that they are always itchy everywhere. But it doesn't seem to bother them much. They love eating rotten foods and drinking and showering in dirty, muddy water. Their favorite pets are cockroaches and mice who sleeps and eats with them. Not just that, even the attitude of the people in the town is stinky. There are people who are unkind to each other, they bully, they tease, and they lie to each other just so that they can get what they want for themselves. They have no rules, so everyone just did whatever was right in their own eyes. But the thing is, when you live in Stinky Town, you die very fast because bacteria and viruses grow very fast in a town that is unclean. So all these bacterias and viruses brought many diseases and infections to them and they died from it very, very fast. Things have always been like this for many, many years and many people have avoided coming to Stinky Town. Until one day, Mr. Clean came into town. Mr. Clean is so clean that he only wears clothes that are white. When he walks in the streets of Stinky Town, everyone in Stinky Town notices him and stays far, far away from him because they hated how clean he is. Mr. Clean is holy because he is separated from the rest of the people in Stinky Town. Now, why is Mr. Clean in Stinky Town, you might ask? Mr. Clean is in town because he is on a mission. And his mission is to choose one person in Stinky Town to become part of his family. So Mr. Clean went around Stinky Town to look for that one person. Mr. Clean didn't like Stinky Town for sure, but he was always in his best behavior. He was always very patient, kind, and polite to the people in Stinky Town. He never spoke a bad word in Stinky Town even though the people always spoke unkindly to him. And then one day, as Mr. Clean was walking in a park of Stinky Town, he saw a little boy playing on his own. So he went up to the little boy and said, Hi little boy, what's your name? He was dirty and smelly of course, but he looked up at Mr. Clean with a pair of very sad and teary eyes and said, My name is Yucky. Why are you crying, my boy? Because my mom and dad died this morning from a terrible disease. So Yucky became an orphan that morning because he lost both of his parents. Mr. Clean was filled with compassion for this little boy and decided to make him his own son. Mr. Clean took him home and cleaned him all over and gave him a fresh new haircut as well. He learned how to eat clean food and wear clean clothes. He also learned to be behaving like Mr. Clean. When Mr. Clean brought Yucky back to Stinky Town one day, everyone stayed away from the both of them. Even Yucky's friends from Stinky Town no longer wanted to play with him because he was so different. But Yucky was not sad, of course, because he knows that it is better to be clean than to be unclean. 
looks like yucky too became holy like Mr. Clean because he was different from the rest of the people in Stinky Town. Do you see that kids? Mr. Clean can make people clean just like him if he wants to. Now in the same way, the Holy God can make holy people if he chooses us to be his people. And as his holy people, what do you think we gotta do? Of course we gotta live holy lives just like our holy God. A holy God deserves a holy people. And that also means that we are different and separated from the rest of the world when God chooses us to be His holy people. But what if we don't live as holy people? What if we live just like the rest of the world? What do you think God will feel about that? He would be angry. And this is what happened to Israel. Kids, tell me if you remember this. Do you remember that last few weeks we learned about how the Holy God has chosen a group of people called the Israelites to be His people? Did you learn that? Yes, you did learn that. Now, if you haven't learned that, you gotta go back in a few videos to find out more. But yeah. This holy God has chosen a group of people to be His holy people. And they are the Israelites. And they are separated from the rest of the world to be God's holy people. In that way, they're pretty special, I suppose you can say. And they're very special in many, many ways. At least three ways I can think of that they are special. Can you think of what are those three ways? Let me see. The first way that they are special is that they worship one God and one God only, no other gods. While the rest of the world, they worship many, many gods. They can worship this God one day, next God another day, and this one another day, and they go on and on. That's the first way that they are holy and different from the rest of the world. Now the second way that the Israelites are God's holy people and they are different from the rest of the world is that they have God's laws written down in the Ten Commandments in tablets of stones that God has given to his people through Moses. Now, do the rest of the world have this commandment of God? Nah, they don't even know who the true God is, let alone live his ways. They don't know. They are lost. And the third way that they are different is... You guess it, the tabernacle. What is the tabernacle? The tabernacle is God's special holy place where he wants his people to build in their land so that God can stay in the tabernacle with his people. And there is where God can meet his people and his people, his people can meet God there. But here's the catch. God's law says, that only the priest can go to God in the tabernacle and meet God. Not everyone can go into the tabernacle to meet God because He is a holy God. And so, what about the rest of the world? Do they have a tabernacle? Nope, they don't. Do they have God staying with them? Nope, they don't. They are not like the Israelites. They're not God's holy people. So, you learn today that Israelites are God's holy people in these three ways. And the reason why they are like that is because God has chosen them, He has saved them, and He has separated them from the rest of the world. And as God's holy people now, they are to obey and follow His ways in order to be holy just like God. But here's the thing. This was not what happened in Israel. Some things, some unholy things happened in Israel. 
Let's find out. In the book of Leviticus, Moses told the people of Israelites all of the rules for God's holy place and for all the sacrifices that they have to offer to God as God's holy people who have been saved from Egypt. And he also taught the priest in Israel how to handle the animal sacrifices. And all of the people, including the priest, obeyed God. As the priest offered to God the animal sacrifices that were brought by the people, God's glory appeared to all the people of Israel. And he sent out fire from heaven and burned up all of the sacrifices offered by the priest. That is how holy God was. And everyone was so amazed at the fire of God that they fell down on the ground and worshipped Him. Everyone except for two guys. And that is Nadab and Abihu. They were the high priest Aaron's sons. They did not think about the holiness of God. They did not think about the holy fire. Instead, they used some censers that priests use for incense and they made their own little fire in front of God's glory. Nadab and Abihu wanted to do it their own way. So something really terrible happened. God sent a second round of fire from heaven and burned up Nadab and Abihu all together and they died. The two sons of the high priest died on the spot. There you have it kids! Today you have learned that we have a holy God and He deserves a holy people. We have been saved to be God's holy people and therefore we are different just like God is different from the rest of the world. Just like this mind group. Take a look at this mind group. We learned that God is the only one who is perfectly good, perfectly clean, and perfectly pure. While the rest of the world around him, they're all dark and gloomy and impure and unclean. They are on their way to hell and to death. But the good thing is that the Holy God can save a people from the dark world to be His holy people, to be holy just like Him. And so it is so, 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 so important for us all to live holy lives for God. Otherwise, God's anger is going to burn like the fire that destroyed Nadab and Abihu. So kids, here's the question that you've got to think about today. Think about this question. Listen up for this question. The question is, are you living as God's holy people, loving His laws and obeying His ways? Or are you living just like the rest of the world? Just like the rest of your friends? Do you look more like God's holy people or do you look more like God's unholy people which is the rest of the world? Have a think about that tonight, today, the whole of today because it's a very important question that you've got to think about for yourself. And we learn today that God is going to be angry if we in our lives do not live like God's holy people. But hey, last week we learned that God is a gracious God, isn't He? He will forgive us if we turn from our ways and if we say sorry and we tell Him that we want to live holy lives just like Him. It's a very good thing to live God's holy lives because God is perfectly good which means that we can be perfectly good just like Him if we follow His ways. 
Don't you want to be perfectly good? I want to be perfectly good, but do you want to be perfectly good? That's it for me today. Now kids, I am going to teach you the memory verse for today. And this is what God said to each one. So listen carefully. I will do it in action. You can follow me too. I brought you out of Egypt so that I could be your God. Hello kids! I'm teacher Jiayi. Now let's sing praise to our God who is so so holy. God is holy means that He is nothing like us. He's far more powerful than us. He knows more than us. And on top of that, He's perfectly good and gracious. So in this first song called God Unlimited. It means that God has no limits. And that is what makes Him holy and separated from us. Let's sing kids! Love he showed. It was.
is nothing that can compare to him. So in this next song that we are going to sing is called You Are Holy. And kids, I'm going to teach you song action. Oh. 
who can say that I have never seen? Who can say that I have never lied? Who can say that I cannot die? No kids. None of us can say that because we have seen in all our life, and we all lie to our parents, to our teachers, to friends, and even to God, and we will all die one day. But there is this. One man who is, who is like us as a human, but he is unlike us in that he never ever seen before. Wow! Jesus did everything that was right according to God, and he loves God. Jesus is holy like. God. And what did he do to us kids? Jesus made us holy when he died on the cross. Now kids, let us sing this song, Who Can See? That's why the Savior came. 